Hey guys, it's Chris and welcome back to another Game of Thrones video, but today I want to do something a little bit different. As we continue to wait for Season 8 and The Long Night Continues, I want to do something a little bit different and dive into some secrets and Easter eggs in Game of Thrones that you may have missed. Now some of these are fairly known, but some of these are lesser known, so I think it'll be fun. So either way, let's jump right in. Game of Thrones Top 10 Secrets and Easter Eggs. Alright, so let's jump right in. Number 1, House Mazen. In the Song of Ice and Fire novels, there is no mention of any House Mazen, but the show has actually featured House Mazen on a couple of occasions. One was where Jon Snow was the Lord Commander and trying to get more men to the Wall, and Sam was having to have him sign all these letters asking for recruits, and the other during the Battle of the Bastards when they were actually featured as a house who fought for the Starks. And the show itself actually makes a joke about this when Jon Snow remarks during that scene with Sam that he has never heard of these people. The name Mazin is actually a reference to Craig Mazin, a friend of the showrunners David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, who gave them advice upon seeing the pilot episode that led them to refilm it and therefore become the blockbuster Game of Thrones is today. 200 Hornwoods, 143 Mazins. 62 Mormons. And number two, Osha. A lot of the actors in Game of Thrones have been in Harry Potter. For example, Michelle Fairley plays Catelyn Stark, David Bradley plays Walter Frey, but Natalia Tena, who plays Wilding Osha in the HBO series Game of Thrones, is a fan favorite Nymphadora Tonks in the Harry Potter movies, otherwise known as just Tonks. The Game of Thrones showrunners included an Easter egg in the first season that hints at her Harry Potter role. Osha is actually making a broom with straw in this scene, referencing her witch-like nature from Harry Potter, and there is a broom featured prominently in several shots. Number 3. R plus L equals J in Season 1. Now I've mentioned this a few times in other RLJ videos, but Game of Thrones' most famous theory is now confirmed, that Jon Snow is in fact the secret love child of Lyanna Stark and Rhaegar Targaryen. However, in the show there was actually a clue dating back to the very first season when Sam and Jon are cleaning the tables at Castle Black and discussing his mother, and you can clearly see in the background there's an R and an L carved into the support beam behind them as they actually discuss Jon's mother. Number 4. George W. Bush's severed head. During the scene where Joffrey is showing Sansa Ned Stark's head, there is actually a scene of former President George W. Bush's head on a spike as well. This was confirmed in the DVD commentary that it was in fact a fake head made to resemble former President George W. Bush. Supposedly, it was just one of the heads they happened to have laying around, which I'm not entirely sure why you would have random president's heads laying around in a studio in Belfast, but of course they claimed there was no political statement intended. I call bullshit on that, but people were pissed off that W's head was on a pike in a TV show watched by millions of people. HBO actually edited the head for later releases and the DVD and Blu-ray releases as well, but what's actually interesting here is they made an apology and here were some of their words. We were deeply dismayed to see this and find it unacceptable, disrespectful, and in very bad taste. Now, just a year later, they actually kind of made fun of this apology by HBO and the show itself when right after the Red Wedding, Grand Maester Pycelle says in the small council meeting, Lord Tyrion should apologize immediately. Unacceptable, disrespectful, and in very bad taste. Number 5. The Iron Throne Hidden Swords This is the kind of shit I love things being hidden in the background. This one is fairly well known, but one of the swords that makes up the Iron Throne happens to belong to Gandalf in Lord of the Rings. You can clearly see here the sword Glamdring, right smack in the middle of the throne, right next to Shithead's, well, head. And on top of that, it's also been pointed out that replicas of Robin of Loxley, otherwise known as Robin Hood, and his blade, as well as a sword from Kingdom of Heaven by Ridley Scott, are also present in the Iron Throne. Number 6, Vermithrax. In Season 1, while Viserys is having a nice, warm bath with Doria, he names off a few dragons of the past whose skulls are now in the Red Keep. He specifically names Vermithrax, who is not a known dragon from history and lore. Vermithrax is actually the name of the dragon in the 1981 fantasy film Dragon Slayer, which is one of my all-time favorite fantasy movies, by the way. This was actually confirmed on the DVD commentary as well of Cripples, Bastards, and Broken Things when Brian Cogman stated that D.B. Weiss used the name as a homage to one of the great 80s fantasy films. Number 7, Monty Python. George R. R. Martin had always loved Monty Python and had already written a nod to Monty Python in A Dance with Dragons. Someone mentions in the books that the Unsullied don't break and run when someone farts in their general direction, a reference to a line in Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I fart in your general direction! In the show, of course, Dario fights the Miranese champion right before Danny takes Marine, And of course he does that by removing his head. 
but before he does, the champion speaks in a fictional language called Old Giscari and apparently says, Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries, just like the French toner from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Number 8. George R. R. Martin Football References Now, of course, if you know George R. R. Martin by reading his Not A Blog, you know the author is a huge football fan. And we're talking about American football here, not soccer. Most people know that read his Not A Blog that he specifically pulls for the New York Giants, and he has placed several references to the Giants into the books. In A Dance With Dragons, he writes, The galley was also where ships' books were kept. The fourth and final volume of the life of Triarch Bellico, a famous volunteer patriot whose unbroken succession of conquests and triumphs ended rather abruptly when he was eaten by giants. Now, of course, this is a reference to the New York Giants Super Bowl victory years and years ago over the New England Patriots and, of course, their head coach, Bill Belichick. I mean, Bill Belichick. Also, as a little bonus here, one one the Giant gets his name from former Giants quarterback Phil Simms, who wore the number 11 on his jersey, so he called him 1-1. Number 9, The Three Stooges Nod. As a nod to more classic TV, George R.R. R. Martin throws out a little nod to The Three Stooges as well. In the first book of Game of Thrones, Catelyn arrests Tyrion with the help of three knights from House Bracken. Their names are Larry's, Mohar, and Curly Kit. Now, obviously, this is the Westerosi version of Larry, Moe, and Curly. And number 10, Destiny. In the video game Destiny, Ghost is a robotic drone who Peter Dinklage voiced over before being fired. In Season 5 of Game of Thrones, Tyrion is seen sitting in front of a window which looks exactly like his character Ghost from the Destiny video game. Now, I'm not sure if this has 100% been confirmed, but it seems like a proper F.U. to me, at least. Although it could be simply an appreciative nod as well, now that he stars in the most popular TV show in history after being fired from the Destiny video game. And for one bonus, the showrunners are in the Hall of Faces. In the Hall of Faces that belong to the Faceless Men and Bravos, HBO did hide a couple of familiar faces into the wall. Co-creators David Benioff and Dan Weiss were among the countless faces, and the face that Arya actually touches belonged to the mother of Barry Gower, the prosthetic supervisor for Game of Thrones. Anyway guys, that's all I have. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure you knew a couple of these, but let me know in the comments below how many you did not know. I think these are pretty cool little references here, and if you dig these type of videos, I'll be glad to do a lot more of these because there are a lot of little references and hidden things and Easter eggs in Game of Thrones, and I really love kind of trying to find all this shit out. Anyway, as usual, thank you for all the support, especially to you guys on Patreon, and a huge shout out to my executive Patreon Smokescreen producers, Hoonjive, D. Brown, Aaron Hadbig, Lala Gig, Will Ray, Joey White, Mike Colton, Doc Holliday, Anastasia, Carol Brown, Gaska, Craig Boone, Lisa Phillips, Vermeer Six Skins, Alfred Boismeyer, Low Horton, Legal Jedi, and John Kerry. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate the support. And to everyone on Patreon as well. And thank you to everyone on YouTube as well. And if you dig what I do here, please give these videos a like, comment, and a share. And of course, be sure to subscribe to get everything and click that notification bell so you're notified when I drop a new video. So thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.